What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. Yeah. So I didn't want to set up my YouTube studio today, so I pulled a Danny Gewurz and decided to go outside. Because why not? It's a gorgeous day. Sun is shining. It's nice. So Mikey Global just came out with some fantastic cine lenses. So the lenses they released are a full frame series of cine lenses. You have a 35, a 50, an 85 all at T2.1. These lenses are fantastic, and the great thing about them is that they cover full-frame sensors. I've been thinking about purchasing these, so over this last weekend, I had the opportunity to borrow them from a buddy of mine, Kyle Abbott, over at C41 Cinema. His YouTube channel will be linked right up here. This last weekend was also 4th of July weekend, so I thought that was a great opportunity to kind of test the dynamics of these lenses a little bit. And I thought, hey, well, while I have these, might as well make a little review of these lenses, I guess. <laughs> but then in the middle of me doing all my tests and making my reviews, I realized I, I can't test the full potential of these lenses because I don't have a full frame sensor camera and I didn't have time to like rent a, a full frame sensor camera. And on top of that, like a weekend just isn't long enough to like test the full capabilities of a lens or any type of camera product for that matter. So I texted my buddy, Kyle, and asked him if he'd be willing to kind of collaborate a little bit and make a full in-depth review of these lenses in a month or so. And of course he said yes. And so that is in the works. So make sure you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on that video when it does come out in a month or so. I didn't want any of my footage from this last weekend to go to waste. So I decided, why don't I make like a YouTube video with some test footage and kind of just talk about my first impressions after using these lenses for a few days. And you can take this review for a grain of salt because again, I only used these for a few days and I didn't even use them on a full frame camera. I used them on my Blackmagic Pocket 4K with a Metabone Speed Booster at 0.71. So a little bit bigger than a Super 35 sensor. But like I said, there will be a video coming out testing the full frame capabilities. So stay tuned for that. So for the next little bit, I'm gonna show you some test footage and some sharpness stuff and a little bit of the details of these lenses. I'm not gonna talk during that test footage, but I will come back at the end of the video, tell you my first impressions of these lenses and whether or not I would recommend them. So enjoy. So let me say, first of all, for lenses that cost a little less than $1,000 a piece, cine lenses that cost a little less than $1,000 a piece, I was very impressed with these lenses when I first started using them. Even though I was using them on a Super 35 sensor, it wasn't full frame, so I couldn't test the full potential. I still have like a few things that I can point out that I loved about these lenses and a couple things I didn't. So first of all, Biggest thing I noticed right when I put it on my camera was that there was minimal to no focus breathing on all three of these lenses. I I couldn't see hardly anything. Like, and that could just be because I, I wasn't on a full frame sensor. So we may see that when we throw these on full frame, but on Super 35, I, I saw 
literally like I, I had to like pull to the edges of the frame in order to really see anything and it was minimal movement if there was any a lot of super expensive prime lenses don't can't even achieve that so that was really impressive the next thing i noticed is that there was a little bit of blooming with these lenses i didn't throw any filters on them this was like the raw lens that test footage was all raw i threw nd filters on a couple of shots but like I didn't have my moment Cinebloom filter on them. That was the raw lens and I, I did see a little bit of blooming and I, I love that because I love bloom. The other thing I really liked about these lenses is that when I shot at T2.1, it was still sharp. My Sigma 1835 1.8, I rarely can shoot at 1.8 because of how soft my image gets. You know, I, I can stop it down to F2.2 or 2.8 and it ends up being really sharp and I still get some depth of field but with these like shooting at t2.1 I felt confident that I could shoot a portrait or a test scene um, close-up scene and have no issues at all and obviously t4 t8 t11 they were sharp as day fantastic as far as distortion I'm not going to comment on that just because I don't have it on a full frame sensor but with super 35 I didn't seem to see any one big thing about these lenses that was really impressive is that a few of those shots I decided to toss on my RS2 with my Blackmagic Pocket 4K setup, and they were able to hold up. These aren't light lenses. They are girthy, very heavy. So these were light enough that I could fly them on a gimbal, but heavy enough to not feel like plastic. And commenting on that, everything is made of metal. And the front cap is made of like a really strong metal back cap metal, but that doesn't really matter. It just covers the lens, that's great. As far as price, these lenses individually run for a little less than $1,000, but if you buy the set off of Mikey's website, you can get them for $2,880, and it comes with this awesome hard case. The other thing to keep in mind is that for the rest of the year, Mikey is planning to come out with a 24, a 16, a 105, and a 135. So then in the future, there will be a full seven lens set, and that is gonna be awesome. So, my recommendation of these lenses, compared to Rokinons, to even the Vespids, I think that these are a fantastic entry-level cine lens set. It's hard to justify purchasing cine lenses when they're somewhat cheap to rent a set of like Canon cine lenses or Ari Zeiss Primes or or Cook lenses. Um, those sets, it's so easy to rent those nowadays that it almost doesn't seem practical to purchase cine lenses or like to purchase a cine lens set unless you're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars on one. But with these, I think that for under $3,000, this is a great lens set to go with. And I highly would recommend them to anybody that wants to have their hands on a cine prime feel. I will be purchasing these as soon as possible. And when the 24 and the 16 come out, I will be purchasing those as well. I'm super excited to get a hold of these lenses for a lot more of my projects. So thank you to Kyle for letting me borrow these over the weekend. And thank you, Mikey, for making fantastic lenses. And I'm excited to make the full in-depth review of these with Kyle. And we'll be able to test the full capabilities of these lenses on full frame sensors. Anyway, I hope this kind of first look slash review video was helpful for you guys and that you enjoyed watching it. They were able to kind of bask in the sun with me for a little bit. Hope you had a great 4th of July weekend and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking. Mm -hmm.